Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series on group theory. In this video, I'm going to explain the basic concepts in group theory of what a group is, what a subgroup of a group is, what an abelian group is, and show you, show you some examples of each. So a group, we'll call it G. A group is just a set, also called G, along with an operation, call it star, which is a function that sends two elements from G to G itself. So it will be of the form A star B equals C, where A, B, and C are all members of G. And so uh, this pair of set and operation has to satisfy some certain uh, axioms or um, statements about uh, the, the, their properties in order to be considered a group. So the first property is that uh, for any A, B, and C, um, a, a star B or A times B is often what it's called, has to be actually within the group. Second of all, we need that for any A, B, and C, A times B times C equals A times B times C. Uh, this is the associative law that you may know from uh, arithmetic, and which has um, this form when you're talking about addition or multiplication. Thirdly, there needs to be an identity element E in the group G such that E times A equals A times E equals A. This is in uh, terms of multiplication or addition, like zero in addition or like one in multiplication. Finally, each element has to have an inverse. So this is some, call, we'll write it a to the minus one, such that a to the minus one times a equals A, a times a to the minus 1 equals e. So this is like a negative number added to a positive number 0 with addition, or the reciprocal of a number times the number itself is 1 in multiplication. So again, any set g and operation times that satisfies these, these four axioms uh, together form a group. But that doesn't really tell you about what these kinds of groups look like. In order to uh, demonstrate some of what they look like, we'll actually show you some examples. Uh, so, I've been talking about addition and multiplication, and indeed, you can make groups based on addition and multiplication. The most obvious one would be the group of the integers. So, this is usually called Z. As a set, it's the set of all the negative and positive integers. To make it a group, we need to give it an operation, so we make it the group z under addition. Uh, so we think about this, uh, any integer plus another integer is also an integer. We know that the associative law holds for addition. Uh, our identity is zero, zero plus anything is equal to anything plus zero is equal to the first thing. And inverses, uh, each number has a negative, so uh, negative 5 plus 5 equals 5 plus negative 5 equals 0. So we can see that z is a group. Uh, but let's say that we wanted to consider only positive numbers. What, uh, does this work? These are called n as a set. But these aren't a group, uh, because even though any natural number plus another natural number is a natural number, and uh, identity and associative law still hold, there's no, number that, that, there's no natural number which you can add to 1 to get 0. That's what negative numbers are, and those aren't in the natural numbers. So what about multiplication? Uh, can we do z in multiplication? Well, again, we have the same thing. Uh, any two integers multiply, get, multiply together are another integer. Uh, multiplication is associative. One times now times any integer is the same integer. But 
there's no integer that you can multiply by 2 to get 1, which is the identity. In order to get to somewhere where we can have multiplication be a group, we'll need to have things smaller than 1 if we're talking about uh, extensions of numbers. So the first thing that might come to our head is the rational numbers, which as a set are called Q. And this is all your integers plus all your fractions of integers. So this is like three halves or two thirds, uh, three halves, negative five sixths, uh, 1,024 over 768. More or less any fraction which has a numerator and a denominator on, uh, on the top and bottom. These are just, of course, all fractions. But the thing is, Q still isn't even a group because Q contains zero. And zero times anything is zero. So zero times nothing can be one. So not every element has an inverse. In order to make Q a group, we call it Q star, which, is, which has all these fractions as element except zero. Now, every rational number times another rational number is another rational number. Multiplication is associative. One times any rational number is equal to that same rational number. But now we, have, we can make an inverse. So we have A over B, then its inverse is B over A. So these, of course, are big infinite sets, but you can also make groups out of small sets. One of the simplest, and I'll erase uh, by talking about Z and N here, one of the simplest groups uh, of finite size is just the trivial group, which has a single element. Uh, we'll call this group T. Which is a single element which we'll call E. And the, uh, the function from uh, T times T, which is a function which takes two arguments in T to itself, uh, we'll call this star, which sends such that E times E equals e. That's about, that's the only thing it can be. So everything in t times another, times another thing in t is in t again, the only, there's the only, the only one thing. Of course, it's got to be associative. There's only one possible outcome of multiplication. Uh, e is, of course, the identity because it times anything in the group is itself. And e is also its own inverse. It times itself is the identity. So even though this, so uh, th this is the smallest possible group, of course, because a group has to be non-empty because it, it has to have an identity. A less trivial, uh, no pun intended, finite group would be the group consisting of 0, 1, with its operati op operation being addition mod 2. This means that um, when, you're, when you add two things in this set, um, you take the uh, remainder after dividing by 2. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, but 1 plus 1 instead of being 2 is 0 because 2 has 0 remainder after being divided by 2. Uh, so if we consider this, um, uh, we only have 0 and 1, and 0 and 1 can only be added together to get 1 again. Um, all of uh, b because it's, it's the same thing as addition, only you're just subtracting two. Uh, when, it become, when it becomes relevant, it's associative again. Um, you, can work that out, you can work that out for yourself if you want. Um, zero is the identity, and uh, zero, is, zero is its own inverse, and one is its own written inverse. So you may have noticed that all these groups I've been talking about so far have uh, the property that uh, any element plus or times another element is equal to the same operation in the other order. This property is called being an abelian group, but not all groups have to be, abe be abelian. Um, for example, um, we can talk about we'll call this group G equals the set of functions
from the interval 0, 1 to itself, and whose operation is composition of functions. So some elements in, the, in this group would be called f, g, and h, say. Uh, so we can check to see if this is, if this is a group. Um, uh, clearly, the composition of any function uh, which has domain 0, 1 with another such function is going to be uh, another, uh, another of that kind of function. So uh, the, the operation is total. Um, composition of functions um, is associative in that uh, f of g of h is the same thing as f of g of h. Uh, it's just all a big stack. Um, the identity function, which sends every element to itself, when composed in, on either side with a function, sends that uh, function back to itself. Uh, but here we want to run into a snag because um, what's the inverse of the function that sends every element to, that sends everything in zero one to zero? Uh, that can't have any inverse because uh, anything comp uh, anything composed it with it will have to send uh, will have to send zero to some other constant, and that just gives you another constant function out, which isn't the identity function. So we'll have to slightly change our definition of g. This has to be all functions with all functions with inverses uh, from 0, 1 to 0, 1. And uh, this means that constant functions are out because, the, the, because those don't have inverse. In fact, any function which is not both 1 to 1 in that it sends every element to only one element and on 2 in the sense that it sends an element to every element in 0, 1, only, the, only those functions which we call bijections or invertible functions uh, can be in G. Um, so G has these properties now, but we, uh, we can see that G is not going to be abelian or commutative. Uh, we can write we can write some functions, say F equals F of X equals 1 minus X and H of X equals square root of x. So if you write f of h, then we get 1 minus square root of x equals f composed with h. This is the simple symbol which is usually used for composition. Uh, but if we write h of f of x, we get square root of 1 minus x. And these aren't the same function, so that means that this group G is not abelian uh, in the sense that its operation isn't commutative. So I've talked about uh, a, a bunch of different kinds of groups, um, and there are, all, there are also plenty more. One particularly um, uh, sort of pop culture noteworthy group is the group of uh, manipulations or rotations that you can perform on a Rubik's Cube in that uh, the, there's an identity uh, manipulation, in the, which is just leaving it, leaving it, leaving it as it is, and you can invert any sequences sequence of rotations on its faces by just traversing through it in the reverse order. Um, some a lot of group theory has been done uh, in efforts to like uh, make it easier to solve Rubik's cubes and to find interesting algorithms for doing so. So now that I've talked about uh, groups, I'll talk about subgroups. Uh, what a subgroup is is a subset. Um, if we're going with G as the name of our arbitrary group, a subset H of G, which is again just a set of elements of G um, that's within G and uh, might also be G itself, um, which inherits its multiplication from G and has the property that any, el any two pairs, any two elements in H have their product, which is uh, already has to be a member of G, their product is an H, and also that, and also that any uh, element has its inverse also in H. So some subgroups of the groups we're talking about, uh, let's say we're talking about the group Z. A subgroup of this could be the group 2Z, of even numbers. So any even number added to an even number is an even number, and the negative of an even number is an even number, so that means that 2z is a subgroup of z. 
Something that's not a subgroup of z, though, would be the set of all odd numbers, because an odd number added to an odd number is an even number, which isn't an odd number. That means that h is not closed under the operation of g. So uh, another interesting subgroup of z is the subgroup that consists of just 0. 0 plus 0 is 0, and 0 has its inverse as 0, and those are both in the subgroup, subgroup uh, containing just 0 of z. As you might guess, this looks a lot like the trivial, the trivial group that I talked about a bit earlier, and um, that sort of uh, similarity is something that will come up in future videos. Um, if we're talking about uh, q under multiplication, then a subgroup of this could be, could be perhaps all the powers of 2, so those are uh, things of the form uh, 2 to the k, where k is an integer, so that would be like 2, 4, 6, 8, or, sorry, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, but also things of the form uh, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, uh, because any power of 2 times another power of 2 has to be uh, yet another power of 2 because it only has 2 in its prime factorization. Uh, so if we talked about our uh, group of bijections from uh, the interval 0, 1 to itself, uh, a subgroup of this could be all of the functions which send 0 to 0, uh, because the composition of any two functions which sends 0 to 0 uh, has to be another such function, and the inverse of any function which sends 0 to 0 has to send 0 which is sent to back to 0 which it was sent from. So that's again in that subgroup. And of course I already mentioned uh, the, mentioned the distinction between abelian and non-abelian groups. We have the integers, rationals, things under sort of the, the normal multiplication and addition of numbers uh, as being abelian. And non-abelian groups are uh, groups of are more general in the sense that they're groups, uh, often groups of compositions of functions or transformations. So the um, the group of bijection that I mentioned earlier is non-abelian, and also the, Rubik, the the group of rotations of the Rubik's cube is also non-abelian. Uh, because you can turn one face one way, then another face uh, one way, and then turn the first face back one way, and then the, another face back uh, the, the opposite of the first way, and you won't get the initial position back. And so, those are the basics of group theory. Thank you for watching this video in our series on group theory. Click down there to view our playlist containing the rest of the videos in this series. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can not miss any more of a Center of Math videos, and click here to visit our website to check out more of our mathematics resources.